Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 3, which I'm calling Characterizing the Multivariate Data. And let's jump to today's topic, which is statistical difference, distance, I mean. And here, when we're comparing two numbers, statistically that is, we want to know how many standard deviations the two numbers are. So if we have two means divided by the standard deviation, this is how many standard deviations they are apart. Now, on the left side of the equation, I square, I take the square root of the squares, and it ends up being this on the right side. But I do this for later video or later sections to be consistent. So here, if we want to see how close the sample mean is to the population mean in terms of standard errors of the mean, then this would be our formula. But when comparing two vectors, you know, standard deviations and covariances must be incorporated. So there's some added difficulty. And so as an illustration, and we won't go through the code, but I'll copy and paste it into the comments as I do every video. If we look at this data, it's two, two variables are uncorrelated, x1 and x2, and this is just a scatter plot, and it's, they're literally generated randomly. And notice that there's more variance in x1 and less variance in x2, but if we look at a vector, 5, 2, you know, or the point 5, 2, and we want to look at the statistical distance from the origin, well, we, we have to factor in the variances of each of these components. Because notice we're sort of at the top of the data from x2, you know, the second variable, but we're towards the middle of variable x1. So we're, we're less likely to be up where we are in terms of x2, but sort of likely in terms of x1. Well, when we divide by the variances and then calculate distance, then we can develop what's called an equal distance. So the ellipse are all equal distance from the origin. And so notice that when we're at x1 equals 0, we're sort of at the very extreme for x2. But then as we move away, x2 goes down, at, down, and, and we get more extreme for x1. Anyway, so these are all statistically equal distance from the origin. And the formula in general, so that when we have uncorrelated data, so that means our covariance matrix is a diagonal matrix. The off diagonal is zero. Down the diagonal would be the variances. That means they're uncorrelated. The co covariance is zero. Or well, the correlation is zero. Same thing. Now the distance from point X to a fixed point Q is given by this formula. We take the difference of the the square difference of the first component divided by the variance associated with it plus the square difference of the second component divided by the stand, the variance associated with the second variable or second component and all the way to p variables. But this can be written, rewritten in quadratic form where we look at the vector x minus y and this diagonal matrix in the middle. But notice it's 1 over the variances, which is actually the inverse of the uh, variance-covariance matrix. So, so this statistical distance can, can be expressed in quadratic form, incorporating the variance-covariance matrix, or 1 over it. Now, remember, the off-diagonals are 0 here. So how do we look at it when there is covariance. So again, I'll copy and paste the code into the comments section, but we're not going to go over it. If we look at this plot, then clearly there's a positive correlation or positive covariance between x1 and x2. So the statistical distance not only needs to factor in the variance associated with x1 and the variance associated with x2 has to incorporate the covariance between the two because when we're at the top since it's positive correlation if we get a pot you know a positive x1 value then x2 is even is more likely a positive x2 value is more likely than a negative because of the positive correlation um, and and how do we calculate the distance there it's this 
So if we're calculating the distance from a point P to a fixed point Q, which we call you know, the vector X and the vector Y, is this. It's some number, some constant number, times the difference of the first two components, squared, a squared distance. When we do that for each component, some number, I'm being a little vague in this description here, uh, times the square distance of the pth component. Then we do all sort of cross products. So it's some number, first component, the difference of the first component times the difference of the second component. Then be the difference of the first component times the difference of the third component. All the way to the very last possible pairwise multiplication, we take the difference of the p minus one component times the p the pth component, difference of the pth component. And each one of these are multiplied by some number. Now these numbers have to be special because distance always has to be positive. So these numbers have to be such that it makes this positive. But this formula, if we go back to an earlier video when we talked about quadratic forms, this is a quadratic form. So it's a minus y or x minus y times some matrix A, and, and the each element of A are what these numbers are, and then times x the vectors x minus y. Well, it turns out that the matrix A that's needed is the inverse of the covariance matrix. And here, the covariance matrix you know, has non-zero <coughs> off diagonals. They can be zero, but it's not a, we're not requiring it. And this is it. And this is known as Mahalanoba's distance, and it's often used in multivariate analysis. It's, it's sprinkled throughout. It's used in weighted least regression. It's just so versatile. So now let's look at Mahalanoba's distance. Now using the inverse of the covariance matrix of the vector x, which you know is sigma inverse, and Mahalanoba's distance has the effect of standardizing the variables, variance to 1, and making their pairwise covariance is equal to zero. Okay, and we'll illustrate that in a second. But first, I need to to write down some notation. Let's let sigma to the one half be the square root matrix of sigma, which in a previous video you know that it's square root matrix times itself is equal to the original sigma. Also, the inverse of this. Uh, sigma can be thought of as a product of the inverse of the square root matrices. Now, if we let Z be this transformation, it satisfies this requirement of standardizing the variables to have a variance of one and making their pairwise covariances equal to zero. So this is the inverse of the square root matrix of the covariance matrix times the vector X minus Y. And let's look at that. The variance of Z, which is the covariance, because Z is a vector. And I like to think of it as, you know, two, because co means two. So I put two of them there. And then I put what Z is in place of that. And then the, one of the properties of covariance is that matrix comes out front. And this matrix and the second component comes out back transposed. But since the square root matrix is symmetric, we just get this. The constant vector y doesn't play a part in covariance. So then we're just left with the covariance of x, which is the variance of x, which is the covariance matrix, the variance covariance matrix of x, which is sigma. Now, in, uh, now if we write sigma as the product of the square root matrices, then we can look at the first two matrix multiplied together times the second two, which in both cases, it's the identity matrix, which then that product is the identity matrix. So the variances are one, right? One's down the diagonal. All the off diagonals are zero, which means the covariances are zero. So all the variables, you know, are have zero covariance. Now, Mahalanoba's distance of a standardized uncorrelated variables is the standard inner product. It's technically squared distance, but so if we now take this transformed variable, which covariance is zero, and all the variances are the same, so Mahalanoba's distance really 
is equal to the standard inner product for the length of a vector, which is z transpose z. But now let's put in what z is in both of these cases. Let's distribute the transpose, which reverses these matrices and vectors. So that's why we get a, a x minus y transpose. And this should be sigma to the minus 1 half transpose, but it's symmetric, so it, it doesn't change it. And this. And so this is the inverse of the covariance matrix. And so this is Mahalanova's distance that we discussed earlier. Now, a brief illustration of this is that we have uh, the motor trend cars data set. It's a data frame. We looked at it in AMV 18, which is Applied Multivariate Playlist, video 18, 32 observations, 11 variables. Um, we take columns 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and put them in a data matrix Y. If we, we can calculate the column means. We can calculate the inverse of the covariance matrix. And then we create this J matrix of it's actually all ones times one over n. And then we can center our data matrix. So we take the mean of each component and then subtract it from the original data. And we calculate Mahalanova's distance using this formula. So it's x transpose inverse of the covariance matrix times x. We store that in a vector that we created to store these. And let's print them out and we get this. So that was sort of a matrix way to calculate Mahalanova's Mahal Mahal distance for each variable. But if we want to just use the built-in function, Mahalanova's distance, we take our data matrix, we have to put in a mean or some vector that we're taking the difference, the covariance matrix associated with this, and Mahalanobas, and we get this. And, and if you notice, it's exactly the same. Yep. And we can use the all equal function to see if they're the same, and it is true. Okay, well, we're at a little over 12 minutes, and I better stop. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.